Okay. Not yet. Michael has. I read about it. I was a little confused. Yeah. I was going to install it, but I got a little confused. Okay. Okay. Um, well, that's, yeah, I think we'll, we might spend some time in the lab if you're comfortable doing that to install it because it, it does require a step that may seem tricky, but it's not as bad actually, but as, as it sounds. <laughs> so you'll notice that with the plugin, it allows you to do a number of things. Some of it is very standard, such as, you know, you can add a send or a like button. Uh, if you don't know what a send button is, you can include a send button on your page, and that way, if I'm visiting a page and I see the send button and I click on it, it allows me to send that page by direct message to one of my uh, Facebook friends. Okay, The like would just, if I clicked on that, it would just show up on my timeline saying I like this page and there's a link on there and then my followers or people who can see my profile can see that on my timeline. Okay, uh, So it has the standard uh, options to recommend something. So again, I can recommend something to somebody. If I, see, if I feel it it's relates to you know, uh, someone, I can recommend that particular website page to somebody and so on. Uh, you can include that on pages and posts and also the nice thing as I'll cover a little bit in a few minutes you can actually include these features from the plugin on widget areas and if you don't know what widget areas are then I, I, we can cover that in the lab uh, time. This is probably the newest feature and this is one of the coolest features about this plugin. It's called social publishing and what this does it allows you to integrate people's names and Facebook pages into your blog posts which I think is really cool and this is new I don't think this can ever would have been done before. Uh, and I'll show you some examples uh, of, of that uh, in a few minutes. Uh, it makes it easier. This is not a new feature, but it makes it easier to integrate comments on your blog. Okay, so, you know, with WordPress it comes with its own commenting system, but Facebook allows you now to comment, people to comment using their, their Facebook accounts. So does it show up both on Facebook and on your blog? Yes. Wow, that's nice. I know a lot of people are going to like that. Yeah. Uh, this is not a new feature, but this, this plugin makes it much easier to okay. integrate. Uh, another really new feature is the recommendation bar. You were probably in the New York Times or one of these websites where you read your article and then all of a sudden something pops at the bottom and says, you may also like the following articles and it gives suggestions. Uh, this is exactly what this does too. It allows you to integrate that feature on your own website very simply actually. Uh, and again, the link here includes much more detail about the plugin and uh, instructions on how to do certain things. So the link will be available with the slides. So if you are interested, if you have the heart, and you know, if you can, if you, if you're, if you feel confident in actually doing it, this is how you do it. When you're logged in from your from your WordPress, uh, you go to your plugin area and search for Facebook. If you just type Facebook, it's the first one that comes up, uh, and make sure it's the one by Facebook. Okay, you'll have you'll have many other plugins, uh, but make sure th to get this one. This is the one that has to be by the Facebook. So it says by Facebook. So the Facebook people are the ones who actually made that one. Okay? Whoops. Once you, come on. Okay. So once you click install now, you know, and activate it, has, has anybody installed plugins before? Okay. You do it for me. Yes. <laughs> uh, but this, I mean, it's that simple, right? No. You can click, click install and activate. You'll find, oh, the mouse is a little jumpy. Sorry. Come on. Go back. Okay. So this is the scary page you'll see in the beginning, okay? And this is probably the step that Steve was, was referring to. It makes you create an account at this website, developers.facebook.com slash apps, okay? It, but it's actually really simple. If you click on it, they have good instructions. Uh, so you'll go to the developers side of Facebook. You have to log in with your face, or prompt you probably to log in with your Facebook um, account, and you'll have an account on the developer side of Facebook. And then, again, it sounds complicated, but it's really not. And then it will show you how to create an app. And once you create an app, it's a few clicks, maybe five or six clicks. And once you do that, it will give you an app ID, an app secret, and an app na namespace. Okay? This is just a screenshot from Facebook's um, plugin page. So this is an example that they are showing to demonstrate how people to, to install this. Um, and then, so this is it. And then what you'll do afterwards, underneath it, you'll see post and the, the settings or the different features. And then you'll see a number of options here that I'll cover in the next slide. So, uh, so below the area here where you would enter your namespace and your app ID, all that stuff, these are all the different features uh, that I've kind of mentioned briefly. Okay? And when you click on something, let's say I want to have the social publisher, you click on it and it highlights it and then what it will do, it will expand it with other options for you to customize those features. And so you don't have to use all of them. You can only use one. You can only use a social publisher. If you already integrated the like button, for example, using a different plugin, you don't have to recreate that. Right? So you don't have to check every option. 
Uh, you can have the recommendation bar if you want or not. You know. Uh, Uh, this is for the social publisher. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But once you click it, it's going to expand, and I'll show you that in the next uh, slides. Okay. So th again, uh, the new features are the social publisher, the comments. I think a lot of people will be interested in that, and also the recommendations bar. Uh, a lot of people will be interested in that also. Uh, these, the like, subscribe, and send button are very useful tools, but most people have that already integrated into the website. But that raises a question though, because you may want to consolidate everything. Instead of having multiple plugins that do the same thing, you may want to remove it from the old plugins that you don't need anymore and just use the, this plugin for the send and like buttons. Okay? So when you uh, click on Social Publisher, this is what you'll see. Okay, you click on it, it expands, uh, it allows you, again, this is just my testing uh, ground, I was just playing with it uh, in one of my test sites, and uh, this allows you to add the options of, okay, do when I post, you know, if I have that integrated on my blog, in the back end of my blog, if I write a blog post, do I want it to publish automatically on my timeline or one of my pages timeline, and so on. Uh, so when you do that, you have to authenticate with from Facebook, so it, it prompts you to do that. You've probably gone through that process when you're trying to uh, authenticate or to verify a third-party application to use your Facebook account or to have access to your Facebook account. Uh, but if, you, if that doesn't make sense, you know, don't worry about it. It will prompt you a step. It will make a lot of sense when you're actually going through those steps. Uh, just one thing to keep in mind, though, is uh, these question marks are very helpful. And sometimes you, if you just check it and click Save, it may not actually work because you do it. It tells you you have to uh, uh, set up something called Open Graph, okay? Uh, but again, so the, all these terms may sound confusing, but there's really good documentation on on the blog post that I that I, the, the URL uh, that to show you exactly how to set it up. It's not complicated; it doesn't require any code. It's just a matter of checking buttons, okay? And again, the instructions on how to set up that graph. Again, it's just a couple of buttons that you have to click uh, to activate the social graph. So this is what it would look like. This is how you'd actually use it. So uh, this should look familiar if you use WordPress, this piece at least. This is an area where you write a new post, right? And if you imagine on the right-hand side, you'll see here an area where you can add your categories and tags, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Underneath the categories and tags on that right-hand side, you'll see two new options, which is mention Facebook friends or mention, mention Facebook pages, okay? And when you click on these guys and you start typing something, it actually searches your account for people you already know. You know, so it will enter, you know, we'll pull up friends. So if I start, if I start to type D-A-L-E, it's going to tell me Dale as one of the options, and I can click on it if I want to mention Dale. Okay? Same with the Facebook pages. If I try to, to, uh, to type C-O-N-N-E-X, it's going to give me several options, one of which will be my own page. Do you have to the at sign? Once you click enter, it does it, and you can add multiple ones. So this is, again, the example uh, that Facebook is using. So this person, his name is Andy Scott, he's writing a, an article, okay, and he wants to mention this guy named Wes Ferguson. And then he's acknowledging Wes, saying, thank you for helping me put the story together. So you can imagine this in your own business if you're writing a story, for example, about you know, a virus that you only saw, for example, Steve, on Dale's computer, or something that's very unique that someone prompted, someone answered that question, you can mention it, say, thank you for your question, Dale, or whatever, and this is how you address this virus, or you address this problem with your computer, something like that, right? Uh, so wh when this person does this, when, when Andy does this, what happens is that it shows a message on the timeline from Andy to, or Ann Wes's um, timeline, showing the message that Andy wrote. It says, thank you for helping me put the story together, and there's a link to the actual link to the story. Does that make, do you see that? You see the value in that? You can mention people, and then it still mentions that, sort of acknowledges that they contributed to that story, but it posts that article or that link to that blog post on the person's uh, timeline. If you want to mention Facebook, page, mention Facebook pages, again, this is the same example. So this article is about Kelly Clarkson and ABC, so he mentions all these uh, pages, and this is what it would look like. So uh, again, this is the same author, Andy, wrote and mentioned the Facebook page Duets. So on, on Duets' Facebook page, it shows the story, a link to that story. Uh, and also, on this is the actual page of the company that this Andy wrote for. And again, it mentioned it. So it says that um, and you can customize, obviously, these messages. You can say, you know, you can customize the message that goes with the link. So he wrote, check out Kelly Clarkson's latest single, Dark Side, and this is a link to the story. Okay? 
Does this make sense? So it's a way to mention uh, different pages or different companies you're working